This is the district where I did my internship in Sweden in 1980. It had 300,000 people, 500 doctors, and 30 children were dying every year. There were six big hospitals. It was bordering the Baltic Sea. This is Nakala, where I worked in Mozambique the same year. Same size geographically, same population, but instead of 500 doctors, two. And in fact, due to a traffic accident, I was alone for one year as a medical doctor. And, and, and uh, there were 3,500 children dying every year. I spent all my life trying to understand those two pairs of zeros. It's very difficult to understand 100 times difference because we only have 10 fingers. So to me, it seems as tenfold differences we can grasp but hundredfold difference we can't grasp. Imagine, I went, wake, woke up in the morning and went to work in Akala, and I had to do the work of 250 doctors in Sweden when we were two, and when we were one, I had to do the work of 500 doctors. How should I do? Should I try to speak as fast as possible with the patient so that I could? No. <laughs> should I take the line of patient and count one, two, three, three, five hundred, I will treat you. It's really unperceivable, the differences in resources. And many of us who come from wealthier countries will actually never understand. We'll never understand you know, that second zero. And look, the resources were 100 times bigger here, but the needs were 100 times bigger here. So the real difference is 10,000 times. We didn't do any cesareans in, in Nakala. We couldn't do at that time. We did fetiotomies. We could save the life of, of, of the woman with that. It was rough, but it was a very good spirit of the staff which was there. And it was a very good guidance from the ministry. Huh? So with the small resources, we gradually learned to do what huh? could be done. And, 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 and Mozambique has changed. The population has doubled. There are 16 doctors now, and there are 3,000 children dying. You may be disappointing seeing, the, but remember now, this is the number of children dying. You just heard the minister tell how much the rate of death has gone down, but look, the population is twice as big. And the fertility rate hasn't fallen that much. The death of children has fallen, the fertility rate has fallen slightly, so it's actually an achievement to double the population and decrease the number of children dying. The biggest problem in statistics is to understand the difference between numbers and rates. We always confuse. I know that UNICEF have the problem every year. Should we tell the world how many children are dying or what rate of death there is in, the, in, in children? And UNICEF was very experienced in communicating and is doing so in a good way. They found out no idea to talk about rates. It's the number of children dying you have to communicate. But you see the problem here for the minister eh, to communicate that he has done his, his, his health service has done an achievement and yet reduction is so small. This is quite impressive. The service that we had in Nakala Porto, which is one of the major cities of this country, uh, cities of this country, though it's not the provincial capital, has today better services than Nampula had 30 years ago. Better stuff, higher level. Memba, the district most remote here, the remote here, they now have a service better than we had in Nakala at that time. Today, Nakala do, for one year, 300 cesarean sections. We did zero. We could evacuate 20 women during uh, 1981. 20 women for cesarean. Dreadful evacuations in the second day of labor, even third day of labor. And we only evacuated those who had good chance of survival. The other we had to take care of. Uh, uh, locally. There was no idea just sending people to send the problem away. We had to send people to solutions, not to get rid of problems ourselves. Imagine the, 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 the progress that has taken place in this country. Cassava has been the main crop in the area. It has poor soils. It's half dry area. And cassava is a major staple food of mankind. It's about half a billion people every day who eat cassava. And it's toxic. What they grow is toxic. And it's normally processed like this. This is a picture from Congo where we later found the disease. People know how to process it. The processing of toxic cassava was discovered 5,000 years ago in Amazonia, in Rondonia, in Brazil. 
5,000 years ago. Archaeological remains show us the processing of cassava, how it was done. We could prove that people know what toxicity is. They can take away the toxin. The traditional methods work, you know. And we say they must have to. You know why they want toxic cassava? Because cassava is the only crop of mankind where we eat a non-reproductive organ. The cassava root cannot sprout. The potato, the jam, sweet potato sprouts. All the cereal sprouts. Cassava is a storage organ of the plant. It rots in two to three days after you, you, you harvest it. Jams you can store for a year. Cassava you cannot store. But cassava has the other advantage now when it can't store, it can stay in the soil for one, two, three years. It is a bank account. Cassava is the first microcredit ever. <laughs> it's a microcredit. So you have your wallet in the soil and you need the toxicity to protect it. And we have proven this is research, but it's helpless. There was a, just heard this morning that there was a big donor funded project to provide these, these farmers with non-toxic cassava which is an absolutely stupid idea. Because they need to have it toxic to protect it from thieves, from, from monkeys, from wild pigs, and from thieves. Eh? And it won't work. And that was extended. There were non-toxic cassavas was brought in. They were planted. And the monkeys were very satisfied. They ate it all. It was tragically. I found, I proven with my African colleagues in Malawi, in Congo, in Tanzania, and Mozambique, that poor farmers cannot su survive on sweet cassava. And still the donor agencies across Africa funded sweet cassava program. We developed a new software, Gapminder, where we transformed things into animation. The idea was to use computer games. So I not only did the, got the ideas from my children, I also had my children to do it. In fact, it was our son, Ola, and his wife, and a small team of, of developers in Sweden who developed the new software. And that makes it possible for us to show statistics in a new way. The strength of our software is that we, that we, we liberated the x-axis from time. For 200 years, this horizontal axis had been occupied by time and we show static picture. By taking this away, I can show one indicator here, one indicator here. Every ball is a country. The size of the ball is the population size, and the color is the continent. Has Mozambique improved? It was 300 here. It was, it was six and a half, almost seven children per woman. Let's, let's, let's look how, how Mozambique has been doing. Not bad. Not bad. How far has Mozambique gone? They've already gone, same distance here, they've done 40% of the way from where it was there to where it wants to go. It's well done. And especially you can see that the last years were actually faster. So which country was here where Mozambique is today at the time of independence? Indonesia. Mozambique today is where Indonesia was at the time of independence of Mozambique. And then taking into account those tragic first decade, which was lost uh, for reasons we all know. Uh, so the TMAR in, uh, in Portuguese, the AA average annual rate of reduction in Mozambique is only 2.4%, and it should be 3.4%. So there's a risk that people will point finger at the minister and say, ha ha, you are not achieving the goal. But let's be a little more critical to how this is calculated. How the result the minister gets depends more on the equation used to make the trend line than on the achievement he has in his country. Here, here. Yeah? I can see the, the econometrical knowledgeable economists understand this immediately. When you calculate it, because these numbers you get are not the measured numbers. It is the estimated number, in a good way. But it is, it is a trend line. And you can see there's one survey which was down here. It seems as Mozambique had a very, very low child mortality in the 1980s, from 84 to 88. That was the area it was very difficult to make service in this country. It was even dangerous. If we would exclude this survey, we would say, for good reason, we go in and examine which, and I strongly advise advise the, the minister to do it. I can help you find a consultant who can, can argue why this should be excluded. 
that will increase your value here to where it probably was. Everyone can see that this is an improbable side. This is dragged down due to this survey. Take this survey away, it went up. And that means that your inclination will be faster and you will get flowers from UNICEF because I have achieved the goal. <laughs> Esta, estes ensinamentos, estas chamadas de atenção, estes lembrar de algumas uh, coisas que por vezes ficam esquecidas, mas que tivemos hoje aqui a oportunidade de rever o professor e, e que nós penso, e que penso que teremos que voltar a fazer este exercício. Gostei de ver este slide que está aqui apresentado. Este slide que mostra que nós também estamos num caminho uh, animador de crescimento, ali ao lado da, da China. <risos> então, isto encoraja-nos para estas parcerias que apontam para o desenvolvimento. Então, eu queria agradecer uh, aos organizadores deste encontro dizer que, e prometer que nós vamos continuar a refletir sobre essas matérias. Devemos organizar outros encontros desta natureza e debatermos ideias, ideias de desenvolvimento. Uh, isso vai realmente ajudar a despertar as nossas mentes, que é isso que por vezes Uh, muita falta faz estas discussões estas uh, e portanto obrigado uh, muito obrigado professor Hans a primeira vez que eu ouvi o professor Hans foi para falar do paralisia tropical quando houve em Nacala e Memba uma epidemia de paralisia tropical chamamos na altura porque não sabíamos o que é que era exatamente até se descobrir que era causado pela mandioca amarga, num período que houve seca em Moçambique, e aquela mandioca concentrou mais cianeto e causou toda, toda aquela situação de paralisia. Voltar a vê-lo e a lembrar desses momentos uh, foi gratificante. Obrigado, professora Rosling, muitas felicidades para si, para a sua esposa, e esperamos voltar a vê-lo. É, em próximos dias, neste momento, fala-se todas as intervenções que fez aqui, que fez também no Village Inn. Toda a gente comenta uh, com satisfação e com vontade de voltar a ver. Felicidades. Okay. E obrigado por ter dito que esta é a sua segunda parte.